All right, so we are back. What did you come up with? Why might industrialization have spurred kind of our interest in how cultures change or that figuring out that cultures do change, right? So industrialization or the shift from an agricultural-based system to a more of a factory-based system, okay, and moving people from rural to urban areas, okay, um, it kind of disrupted our society. It brought a lot of rural people into the towns and cities. Okay, seeking work, seeking jobs, okay, and they started to work in the factories. Okay, and so we started to see that things were different in different places. So previously, people had kind of thought that culture was very static, okay, um, it didn't really change. The culture is how the culture always was. There wasn't a lot of focus on do cultures change, and if they do, how do they change? So people didn't really think about this very much. But then once we started mixing culture, and you started to see People all of European descent, all in the same society, but different cultures within that society, they started to blend. They really started to see these differences. And so people then started to think, well, maybe culture is different in different places. Okay, how is it different? Okay, so then we start to study how European villages and cities were structured, okay, how they were built physically, how people lived in them, how people interacted with that built environment, and how that perpetuated the culture. But then we start to think, okay, if we're studying this in our own culture, we're thinking about Western culture, what about non-Western culture? How do other places work? How do people who live in, let's say, rural uh, Sub-Saharan Africa or people who live in Far East Asia, how do they live and how is that different? So people start thinking about these things. Remember, our second uh, major three influences of the development of cultural anthropology or anthropology in general, I should say, is evolution. Okay, so when Darwin proposes his idea of evolution by natural selection, and he publishes on the origin of species, people really didn't like this. It wasn't very well received. People at the time focused largely on religion, and this kind of countered that. It went against their religious beliefs, and they were challenging that. And they didn't really appreciate this new perspective that challenged their current perspective. Okay, but as... Younger scientists kind of started to take the place of older scientists um, as the shift started happening in the field of um, science. We start to see the adoption of evolutionary theory more readily. So it's more easily accepted, it's applied more widely, and then we start to see these evolutionary theories or development across generations or adaptation across generations. We start to see those theories applied um, in non-evolutionary situation. So then we start to apply it to things like culture. And we start to say, well, we know cultures are different and we know cultures can change because we're seeing that through evolution, or excuse me, through industrialization. So then how can we apply these ideas of evolution to that concept? Okay, so we're kind of combining now the ideas of we've seen change because of industrialization and now we're going to try to explain that change through concepts of evolution. And that's when we see in anthropology um, early concepts of unilineal cultural evolution. So this is the idea that we can rank societies from least developed or least civilized to most developed or most civilized. This is a very early theory, one that we don't use anymore, but it came out of the evolutionary theory. And the idea is that people in societies and cultures would move from one category to the next, and they move from least civilized to kind of a barbaric, and then moving up through the categories to civilized, and what we thought of as civilized at the time was European or Western society. Okay, these ideas were abandoned, um, but we do continue to use evolution in anthropology quite heavily. And remember, the third aspect is um, colonialism. Right, so we have um, colonialism. And I'm just going to move myself here up and out of the way for you. Okay. Just cover up that picture because that's not really the most important part on this slide here. The most important part are the words. Okay, so we want you to be able to read that there. So remember, the third aspect is colonialism. Okay. And this is a historical practice. It continues today. There are some really interesting theories about how colonialism plays out in the modern world. But it's the historical practice of a more powerful country claiming possession over a less powerful one. Okay. And so we start to see European um, countries being colonists or colonizing other parts of the world. And while um, they weren't the only colonizers 
um, your friends in those areas are who you think about most often and they have the most kind of power and influence over their colonies. So we see this colonization and colonial powers are entering these communities and they're saying, well, these people are very different, they're very confusing. How do we convert them to a more civilized culture? So to do that, first we need to understand their culture. And so they're employing anthropologists at this time to help better understand the people in those communities. And then in the 1920s, we start to see what's called salvage anthropology or the salvage paradigm. And this is because we started to notice that um, different cultures were starting to fade away or blending together, we're losing some of this cultural variation or being forcibly removed from colonized people. We're saying you can't practice your culture, you can't do these things. Um, so we're forcibly removing their culture and giving them a new culture. So then anthropologists see this happening, we start practicing what's known as salvage paradigm. Um, and this is observing these ways of life, recording them systematically before they disappear completely. Because we thought it was gonna happen that as cultures interact, and as people were forcibly removed from their culture, that we'd start to lose culture. And so we started to um, try to save these cultures in a way and try to preserve them. So those are the three big ways anthropology was influenced. Industrialization, evolution, and colonialism. Definitely know those three. It really kind of forms the basis of what anthropology started as and how it developed. So very important concept there. So the next section we're going to start talking about are what are the four fields of anthropology. Okay, so the four fields of anthropology, obviously this one is just cultural anthropology, but because it's an intro to the field as a whole, we want to talk about the four subfields as well. Okay, so when we talk about the four subfields, we're talking about cultural anthropology, archaeology, biological or physical anthropology, and linguistic anthropology. And like I said, this anthropological way of thinking, which is really what I want you to get out of this class, how to think like an anthropologist. This runs through all four of these subfields. So what we're going to do next is we'll talk about each one of the subfields, then we'll talk about what they all have in common. So we'll see you in a few minutes.